Hey everybody, Leslie here, and today I want to talk to you about a really interesting hormone called melatonin. Some of you may know it from the airport uh, stores where you buy a bottle on your way to a different time zone to help reset your circadian rhythm. Others may know it as something that uh, an older aunt or uncle takes to help with sleep. So melatonin actually has a lot to do with hair growth and hair pigmentation. I actually take it every night. And as I began to look at this, I suddenly realized that another daily habit of mine might actually be confounding the effects of the melatonin I was taking in the evening. And that daily habit was my daily cup of coffee. That's right. Coffee may have an effect on your premature gray hair and on your hair loss. So let's do a deep dive on melatonin and find out how that happens. Before I start uh, on that though, I would like to just tell people who don't know very much about melatonin where it comes from and why it is so important to human health, especially as we get older and not just for sleep. So melatonin is a hormone that is produced deep in our pineal gland and it is produced in response to light. That's right. So sunlight regulates the synthesis of melatonin in the body. The photoreceptors in our eyes that have absolutely nothing to do with our vision, but are actually acting as signals to the brain to upregulate production of the hormone cortisol or the hormone melatonin for sleep, that is uh, that signaling is very, very crucial. And of course, I've spoken in other videos about how modern life and modern lighting actually sets that rhythm askew. So melatonin, the importance of melatonin is that it prepares the body, basically puts it on that glide path towards sleep. And that is incredibly important so that the body's natural rest, repair, recycling, regeneration mode kicks in at night. But I wonder if you knew that when melatonin is circulating in the body, it actually is doing more than just inducing sleep. I did mention regeneration, but it also, in addition to repairing DNA during sleep, and repair of DNA is one of the hallmarks of aging, it also acts as an anti-cancer protective. So let's take a look at this great chart, which is from a paper out of uh, the University of Lubeck and the University of Texas Science Center in San Antonio from 2008. Actually, I'll just give you that citation so you can see it. There it is. And they've got a fabulous, fabulous diagram here, which basically points out all of the different ways in which melatonin improves human health. And you'll notice that it does things like affect vitiligo. So for those of you who may be suffering from vitiligo, you may as well try this. There don't appear to really be any downsides, especially as we age and our natural melatonin production goes down anyway. If you would be willing to top up your sex hormones, say testosterone, progesterone, or estrogen, then why not melatonin as well? But take a look at the other effects it has on skin. It helps with wound repair, and it also helps with, um, with reduction of fragility of skin. And we know that as we get older, our skin loses that sort of elasticity. It does become more fragile. And this looks like a great way to counter that. The other thing is that you'll see that it actually modulates hair growth. And it also deals with gray hair. I thought that was fascinating that they actually bothered to put that in here. So all of these great benefits from melatonin, and we don't really think about melatonin for its anti-aging benefits or its beauty benefits, but I really think we ought to. And now that brings us to my original point about your daily cup of joe. So 
There is this Korean study that came out in 2020 out of, like I said, out of South Korea, and it talks about daily coffee consumption. So lifetime coffee consumption, pineal gland volume, and sleep quality later in life. Now, what's so fascinating about this is they took a, um, they took very large group, 160 um, elderly individuals, and they basically separated them into two groups. So the group that had not had coffee were not habitual coffee drinkers. And then they had another group that were habitual coffee drinkers. And the interesting thing is that um, they measured the, uh, the size of the pineal gland inside the brain. And they noticed that those who were habitual coffee drinkers, who had drunk it, say, over a period of what they call 60 cup years, actually had uh, pineal glands that were 20% that were smaller. Now, if your pineal gland is 20% smaller, it is very likely it is going to produce uh, an amount of melatonin that is also uh, reduced and positively correlated with the decline in size of that particular gland. So we might make the assumption, though I don't have the proof of this, that if you reduce the pineal gland 20% in size, that you reduce 20% in output. Again, there's not a study on that. I'm just making that assumption to prove a point. Smaller size well, size does matter, right? So if your pineal gland is small, if your pineal gland is smaller, your melatonin output is lower, then you have less melatonin to fight skin fragility, to fight gray hair, to help with wound repair, to help with DNA repair, to help with vitiligo, to help with cancer. So I encourage you to read both of these papers I think it's quite interesting. And although these people were studied were individuals who were elderly and had drunk uh, coffee for decades, multiple decades, think about the fact that many of us drink loads of coffee. It's not just one cup in the morning to start our day. It might be two or five or even 10 cups in some cases. Many of us use coffee as a crutch to basically keep us going and mask an energy deficit or potentially even a mitochondrial deficit because we can't produce the energy we need to keep going and bring it, right? So the long-term benefits of that, I'm sorry, the long-term damage of that is that we are actually shrinking our pineal gland and we shrink that gland um, at our own, uh, to our own detriment. So if you are looking to increase the thickness of your hair, uh, reduce gray hair, improve sleep quality, um, increase wound repair, increase DNA repair, and find a cancer preventative, might be very interesting to look into this easy to find over the counter product called melatonin. And at the same time, to protect the pineal gland, try keeping your coffee consumption down to maybe one cup a day, or maybe a few times a week instead. So that is today's tip for longevity, beauty and health. Hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions at all, leave them in the comments below. I will answer the first 10 questions that I get. I try to keep on top of it. You guys send me questions all the time, even when I'm not posting videos. I have no idea how you all found me, but um, I do try to keep up. And in the future, I will try to take those questions you ask me and then just create videos around them so that everybody gets the benefit of the research I do um, when I try to answer your questions. Thanks so much for watching. As ever, if you like this, please subscribe. And if you would like to get my newsletter on anti-aging tips and beauty hacks, then please also sign up for that too. Should be a link in the comments section below. Take care.